you want to learn how to trade stocks and cryptocurrency? Join our community of traders. Go to richpicksdaily.com and find the next 10 bagger. How's everybody doing today? I'm your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest. It's Craig Alford, who is the Board of Directors of First Energy Metals. How are you doing today, Craig? Very well. I hope everyone's doing great. Fantastic. Excited to have you on the show today. Can you give us a little bit of a background on your exploration and mining? Okay. Uh, my experience has uh, taken me to actually 34 countries. Wow. Uh, I've been all over the place, been all over Canada and the U.S. as well in terms of uh, more North American based exploration. But um, I started way back in the early 80s and have been busy ever since then on gold, silver, oil and, and lithium projects, uh, which I've been looking at for about six years now, uh, concentrating on those as well as, of course, the, the precious metals that never goes away. It's always some interesting gold or silver, platinum. Yeah, it's actually quite exciting because gold is starting to heat up again. And can you tell us a little bit about your current assets? Okay, well, first, uh, Energy Metals has a, a nice portfolio. Uh, we have two sort of top-tier projects we're calling core projects, and other projects they're calling non-core However, they're all very interesting. Uh, the non-core projects, for instance, uh, one of them is located in Northwestern Ontario called the Scramble Mine. It's actually a very interesting project of uh, shear zone hosted gold, almost a kilometer in length. Uh, it's seen some uh, historic exploration that has found uh, quite a bit of gold, including up to 200 grams per ton uh, and beyond. So it's, it's still a very interesting target. So many... Um, modern exploration targets are actually old targets that have now seen the light of day again because of the price of gold uh, going up so so well. I mean, back when the uh, investigations of that project were, were going, gold was around $50 uh, an ounce. So now here we sit at uh, over 1800 US. And um, the other project, which is considered non-core again, is in British Columbia. It's in a nice jurisdiction uh, near Nelson, BC. And there's some very active exploration ongoing there. Of course, the, the most important projects for us uh, for 2021 and beyond will be in uh, Northeastern Quebec in the Abitibi belt. Um, one is in a very ac active lithium uh, exploration area. And I suspect that area of Quebec will turn into the number one important region for Canada, lithium exploration and development. Uh, it reminds me a lot of, you know, what you see in Western Australia. I don't know if the investors are uh, familiar with the green bushes. It's the world's largest pegmatite uh, related hosted uh, lithium deposits. It's absolutely massive, wow. but you know, Canada has yet to really uh, get going into the lithium market in terms of a, a developer. So uh, that area, I would suspect, keep your eyes on. There's a number of companies there. It's very active and uh, it's got good infrastructure. Of course, Valdor is nearby, uh, Ontario, Timmins, all, all that region. It's you throw a rock and someone's drilling, someone's hitting a rock with a hammer. Uh, it's very active exploration area. The Titan Gold Project is also a core asset that is uh, a little bit north of the lithium project, and it's in a very interesting region. There's a big deformation zone called the Sunday Lake Deformation Zone, which um, one of the main features we look for is secondary structures off a of main structure. So we see these main big structures like Sunday Lake, and we see these secondary structures that come off of them. And Detour Lake Mine is one of those. Uh, it's hosted along that secondary structure. That's about a 20 million ounce deposit. And we're located sort of in the middle between Detour and what's uh, called the Fenelon Project that Wallbridge is currently investigating. And they've had some spectacular uh, drill results. 
um, 17 grams over uh, quite a width of meters. So we're looking at a very, again, a very active target. So um, our core a assets are based in active exploration zones, productive exploration zones, and ones that have good infrastructure, which is very important. I, I see a lot of juniors reaching for the moon, you know, up in Nunavut or, or very uh, high uh, north in Quebec or Ontario. And I know how much it costs to build roads, to build uh, hydro lines. It's very, uh, you know, price, uh, it's, di it's difficult for them to raise that kind of capital to build the infrastructure as needed. So we can build off the local infrastructure, hydro lines, uh, access is good. So uh, I think First Energy has been very clever. Not one of our projects is uh, located far off of active and current infrastructure. I like that. And when we ever, when we interview mining companies, I find that they're always drilling and they're always exploring in areas where there's already been explorations found. And I think that's very smart because you know that it's in the area, it's in the region, it's under the ground. So it just makes it a lot easier. You're going to spend less money looking for things and drilling holes that are going to be you know, not successful when you do that. So I think that's a very smart strategy. Now, in speaking on that, why are these locations the most interesting for the company? Well, as I said before, I mean, in terms of lithium um, and gold, I mean, you, you take a look at these greenstone belts uh, that are located across Quebec, Ontario, Manitoba. They've had a lot of success there as well. And they host very uh, an assort, an assortment of metals. I mean, from uh, the base metals like uh, copper, nickel, to precious metals, uh, palladium, uh, gold. And now, of course, the world's attention is on lithium. So, as I said before, I mean, a country like uh, Australia has gotten a head start in terms of production, but Canada also has that same type of geology as Western Australia. We have the same thing. So it's, it's merely a matter of time before someone comes and discovers a, a really whopping large deposit. And we think we're in the right region there. I mean, previously there was a deposit, a lithium deposit there, that's only four and a half kilometers away from our current area. And once again, like where you find one, you find others. And uh, so everyone's kind of looking for obviously economic deposits. And so far from what we've seen of previous work, there is economic mineralization there. The grades are good, uh, it's continuous, um, the strike length is good, and the world is, is about to demand lithium like never before. And why would investors be excited about your Augustus Lithium property and the Titan Gold property? Okay, well, um, I think Titan is, is very exciting. And again, like I, I said, it's, it's located in the right structures. Uh, we've just recently uh, been completing an IP survey that's induced potential that should give us a, a good couple of drill targets. Um, you've got a 20 million ounce deposit nearby in Detour Lake. Uh, that's, it's it's uh, interesting to look back at it and, and see that it started out being around 3 million ounces. And with further drilling and with further geophysics and exploration work, they built it up to 20, over 20 million ounces. So this is a, a very uh, fantastic region for gold. As I stated before, Wallbridge is there uh, to the east of us, uh, conducting exploration on these same uh, secondary structures that leave the Sunday Lake deformation zone. So that's, that's really interesting. And, and the, uh, for investors, you know, the company is just getting started there and we'll be building that story further. In the case of the Augustus Lithium projects, I think, any investor who's looking at uh, metals should be looking at lithium, should be looking at where, where is the next big play going to be? And we think it's going to be in that region and come back. I mean, I, 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 you know, there are a lot of competitors there. There are a lot of other explorationists there. And some sort of consolidation will likely happen. We've been expanding our land position there. And there are sort of numerous stack zones. There are numerous parallel zones. So it's a matter of, you know, um, mapping, getting out there and drilling 
uh, in doing the work to discover a, a very good economic lithium deposit. Um, I think, you know, I, I think a lot of investors may have heard of Namaska and there was a failure there, but still it's a, it is a good target and it will probably see the light of day in terms of production, but that's 300 kilometers north of Shibugamu. And that's a tough area. You're going to adding a lot of dollar cost to production to be again, so remote. Whereas uh, we're in a very good region with a very active mining hub just uh, 40 kilometers away. Fantastic. Now, lithium prices have been on a tear this year, up around 100%. Where do you see prices and what are the main supply and demand drivers? Well, the main uh, driver, um, I think the whole world is kind of recognizing is the electric vehicle. Yes. Um, we all have lithium ion batteries around the house. You've got it in your phone, you've got it in your laptop, uh, a lot of children's toys, everything is, is your toothbrush now is rechargeable lithium ion batteries. And I don't think the world's gonna give up on this because lithium is the third lightest element in the entire universe. It's only helium, sorry, hydrogen, helium, and then lithium. And lithium is actually a metal. The other two are gases. So they're, we're not gonna be using them for batteries. But um, the current uh, market penetration by electric vehicles, it, you have to admit, it's, you don't see them everywhere. But you take a, take a look at a lot of the countries around the world, China, India included, are looking at banning the sale of gas-powered vehicles. And um, it seems like ahead of the curve typically is California and Northern Europe uh, that plans to ban it within this decade. And uh, Norway, India Norway, and China have made Nor motions. Norway is really leading the way, I heard. Yes, Norway. they really leading. are. In fact, 60% of sales now are electric vehicles there. Incredible. And probably next year, you won't even see anyone buying them, uh, like a gas-powered vehicle, because just what's the point? It's going to be banned from the road soon, right? I think 2027. So, um, but, in, you know, to my mind, when you've got the U.S., India, China, move, making these motions towards the banning of, of gas-powered vehicles, wow. That's really going to change the market. Now, here's the amazing thing is the world production, global production of currently of lithium would just represent uh, to feed about 1% of that uh, car market. So for every 1% increase in the global car market for electric vehicles, you, you're basically eating up the world's production of lithium. So that's why the drive is on now to find lithium deposits as well as get that out of the hands of the Chinese. I mean, let's be quite frank. If you're Tesla, if you're GM, if you're Ford, you're basing a lot of your production here in North America, you would like a North American source for lithium. Um, a lot of the stuff that comes out of uh, Chile and um, Australia is bought up by the Chinese right now. So there's going to be a very interesting time where our producers here, our car market here, they're going to look for local sources of lithium. And currently, you've got some interesting areas in Nevada that are clay-based. Uh, however, that uses a lot of acid. Uh, that's a very sort of non-green way to get at a, a, something that's thought to help revolutionize the planet and go green. By, by going electric. So, you know, the hard rock deposits of Ontario, Quebec, Manitoba are really going to take precedence and they're going to be seen as quite favorable. Uh, there's an area in the Carolinas that's uh, under production, Piedmont lithium is there. And if you actually do a side by side comparison with their deposits, uh, these look really good. These look wider, longer, um, and, and uh, often the case more extensive area, that area of Quebec that we're looking at. So uh, I would say to any investor, look around, see who's uh, getting some good results on lithium and that's gonna take off over the next couple of years. I agree hundred percent. Now in the area that you guys are looking to explore, are there any potential takeover candidates that you would consider or would you guys ever consider being uh, you know, taken over by a bigger major? 
I think it's a it's a great question, but I think it's it's early to, to look at that for First Energy um, to take over perhaps um, a small junior within our strike strike zone that may make sense. Uh, however, I mean, who knows? I, you know, if I always wonder if you're Tesla, wouldn't you want to lock in your lithium uh, resource and reserves? Um, you know, and you look at companies like I know it's out of their their plays play zone, but you know, Apple has so much money, uh, two point two trillion dollar market cap. You got to wonder when is it that even the oil companies too, if you're the Chevron and you're not gonna just sit uh, on the bench while everyone else goes to play an electric vehicle, you're gonna say, hmm, why don't we take our billions and focus it into uh, lithium? So I wouldn't be surprised if you see some massive consolidation that way in, in the future. Uh, for our company itself, um, there is a project um, nearby which has some resources and reserves now, uh, 43.1 compliant. So, you know, that there may be some talks of consolidation, but it may be out of our hands uh, at one point in time. A larger company might come along like Arbomorrow uh, as well and start snapping up these juniors that you see out there. And, you know, you, you look at Barrick and Newmont, what they've done over the years is they gobble up a junior that had good results. So, we're going to see a similar thing start happening with a, a major company for lithium, probably start gobbling up some juniors. Yeah, it makes sense. And what you say with Tesla makes sense. I mean, you're the world leader in electric vehicles. You need lithium. So yeah. And, and you, you know, when you got, yeah, when you've got China, imagine the Chinese car market all being electric. They're going to need everything that Australia can produce everything that Chile can produce. So, what are you, what are you going to left, left with scraps? No, you, you're going to try to lock in something now, right? Uh, for Obviously, offtake agreements will be in place, but maybe they'll just decide to have the vertical uh, infrastructure built in from themselves from exploration, production, and then uh, development for themselves. Why not? You guys have had quite some su success over the last year with the stock. The stock's done well. What are some short-term and long-term catalysts for first energy metal shareholders to look forward to? Okay, well, I think this summer is going to be a nice ride for investors. I mean, um, if you one of the interesting things, I was just talking to the CEO uh, of uh, First Energy. It's amazing how many juniors are out there now who've acquired a property but haven't actually done any work. Like you t I take a look at press releases going back the last two years and they, they you know, say, oh, we've got 100% interest in this, but we got the project and we rushed out to start drilling because we know, you know, people need to focus on who's actually active. So currently we're, we're doing trenching, uh, surface trenching, which is, you can think of trenching just like a vert, uh, horizontal drill hole on surface. Um, we're doing drilling. We started a 5,000 meter drill program uh, in early April, and we are using uh, SGS uh, laboratories to help us uh, not only analyze the rock, but for exploration purposes. And we're also in talks uh, for metallurgical testing because we, we can see how quickly the world's going to need lithium. And if we've got metallurgical testing done to show that it is indeed economic. These, these grades that we're experiencing and, and cutting through right now, these are economic grades uh, for production. And even though 1%, it's always like someone looks at 1% uh, lithium, they think that's not very much, but it is. Um, just to let you know, if, if I were to tell you, you had 10,000 grams per ton gold, that would be off the charts, but that is 1%. 10,000 grams per ton or 10,000 ppm is 1%. So when someone says to you they have 1.4% lithium, that's actually 14,000 grams per ton. So uh, the, the quantity we're talking about is actually quite large for uh, a ton of rock compared to, say, gold, precious metals. You never see 1% uh, gold. But um, anyway, getting back on track for First Energy, there's a lot our company will be doing in this year. We're, we're being aggressive 
we're getting out there first. We're going to be uh, raising a little bit more money, maybe extending our exploration program. Uh, we got the drill in place. A lot of people even asked us, how the hell did you get a drill? Because they're not available right now. They're tough to grab. So once we have it, we've got it, it's drilling, and we're getting great results so far. Um, there's previous drilling on the project. One hole actually penetrated through uh, 300 feet of 1.4 or 1.5% uh, lithium oxide. So that's really impressive. We've got to go back there and redrill it and then go east-west of it and see how far that kind of zone extends because that's as, as, as impressive as anyone has for, for uh, cutting through lithium and pegmatites. Also, there are some rare earths uh, involved, tantalum, cesium, beryllium, that we're taking a look at. Um, we may find economic um, quantities of those, and that way it's a very value added to the project. Um, you know, much like a gold project often enjoys silver credits and things like that, you could have the rare earth credits here. One of the things that is a key driver for our community, and we've got investors that are going to be watching this video from literally 100 countries, is share structure. You mentioned it a little bit that you're going to have to raise some capital. All small cap companies have to raise capital. All big companies yeah. have to raise capital in order to move forward in your business plan. Can you talk us a little bit through your share structure and maybe a little bit about your shareholder base? Okay, sure. Um, we have about 50 million shares outstanding and I'm not even sure right now our, our market cap is around 20 million or so. So we're, we've got a lot of growth, I think, uh, for value. Uh, you know, you take a look at some of these deposits, they're worth billions. So it, it, Matt, if we come to the part where we have some uh, resources to talk about, usually they're very, very nicely uh, sized in terms of their um, value. But uh, so the, the company doesn't have a lot of shares outstanding. And we're thinking of raising money, but we're very careful in a very stepped way. We're not doing like a $20 million raise. We're raising small amounts to keep that expiration going. And hopefully those results will see us enjoy a, you know, a dollar share, $2 per share, so that the next money raise will be a lot easier for us. But um, we've got a lot of interesting calls from, from big groups. So uh, I think we'll be able to raise the money rather easily. Very good. That's impressive. I love your share structure. 50 million shares is, I always tell everyone, 100 million shares is good. 50 million shares or less is like bingo for an investor. It's like, yeah. that is amazing. It means that management is responsible. They understand the value of having a tight share structure and there's going to be less dilution in the stock, less selling pressure. So yeah. for investors, that's an extremely key highlight for me. And uh, thank you for doing it the right way. And, and I like the fact that you're not looking to do a massive bot deal, which can create a massive amount of dilution, especially here in Canada. Seems as though every time a company does a big bot deal or a large financing, the stock will go to the financing price or lower. I've seen it over and over and over again. It's almost like the kiss of death. It's, it's always a good thing that companies are raising money, but investors don't like it because it creates a lot of dilution. So the sure. fact that you're willing to do it slowly and steadily, I think is going to create a lot of excitement for shareholders uh, to hear that. Now, in saying that, our community is going to be learning about first energy metals from literally all over the world, and they're going to have some questions for you. They're going to be interested in potentially learning more and investing. What's the best way for them to get in contact with the company? Okay, right now, the best way would be to write us. Um, the website, firstenergymetals.com, uh, has a contact page. Uh, there's an email address of info at firstenergymetals.com. We'd be happy to answer uh, what we can, what's allowed to, to answer at this point. Uh, obviously, we're, we're being fairly aggressive with releasing news. We think that we should be able to have some news coming out every week or every two weeks maximum. So investors will be up to date on what's being done. But if they do have questions, uh, please, I direct you to the website for now. Uh, later, we'll probably have some investor relations people standing by, but for now we're using uh, email on the website. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Craig. All right.
Always great talking to you. Hey, it's always a pleasure. And we look forward to seeing you guys consistently grow. This is the board of directors, Craig Alford from First Energy Metals. Now, remember everyone, Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence and speak to a financial advisor before you invest in anything that we talk about here in Rich TV Live. If you like the video, please smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere, and subscribe for future updates. If you're not winning, you're not watching, we bring you the winners and we bring them to you first. We love to identify undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed companies before they explode. We've actually been covering this story for quite some time and you've been a huge success already for our community. Thank you for all your hard work and effort, Craig. All right. Thanks, guys. And thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day, everybody. All right.